Do you want your cloud IDE to look like your local IDE? Well, Lambda's console now does, using the popular Visual Studio Code open source code editor. Hi, I'm Julian Wood, and in this video, we'll show you exactly what this looks like. Now, developers tell us that they like using the familiar VS Code interface with its accessible and customizable interface, which provides a coding experience that's similar to working with your function code locally. You can install selected extensions, apply your favorite themes and settings, and use the keyboard shortcuts and coding preferences that you like. You can also now display larger function package sizes right within the console, which is a big win. And it also integrates with Amazon Q Developer for real-time AI suggestions and insights to help you write, understand, and troubleshoot your Lambda functions more efficiently. Let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm doing is launching the Lambda console, and I have a new function I've created here, funny enough, called Lambda New Console. So if I was to scroll down a little bit over here, I can see I have a what looks like a VS Code interface, and it's telling me I'm using the new Lambda console. So immediately, I can see this looks like VS Code. I've got the icons on the left. I've got the Explorer bar in the middle. And then the code on the right, I'm using Node.js, so it's done the syntax highlighting. You know, what I expect in my local IDE now looks like this in the cloud. So really, you know, no context switching looks the same kind of way. Now, another thing that is really cool is before you couldn't have large uh, files in your, in, in your project. So if I had a large file, it wouldn't be able to display here within the Lambda console, and I wouldn't be able to change any of my code. So if I click here on the big file icon, I can see that, well, it's a big file. And if I actually scroll down a little bit, I can see that it is, oh, there's clicking on the big file. And if I actually scroll down a little bit, I can see here that the package size is 11 meg. So now I can actually, even though it's a package size of 11 meg, because my code um, file is under three meg, I'm able to view that in the console. At standard uh, uh, VS Code, so I can look at the command palette and I can look at all the Lambda specific things and you know pick a whole bunch of cool things that I'm able to do with Lambda. So the next thing I want to do is look at environment variables. So I scroll down over here and I can see I can see the environment variables directly here in my console and I can select it and I can click edit on the environment variable and using the standard configuration I can amend the value from here and save that and you know that's available uh, right within my visual view in the same kind of place. So next up I want to do is I want to uh, test my functions. I'm going to click on the test button and I'm going to create a new test event. Let's just close that first. So here, let's create a new test event, uh, select that. And in the same place, again, all in the same kind of window, I'm able to view a um, test event. So yeah, it's opened up and I can uh, you know, create a private event or a shared event. And also handily over here, I can look at a whole bunch of event templates. So I'm building with API Gateway. So I can select that from the template, uh, template dropdown list. And that's going to show the event JSON, which is going to be sent to my function, and I can edit the query string parameters and handily, why not just add my name? I'm going to save this. I'm going to um, give this a name and save that, and I could save it as a private one or a shareable as well for other people to view in my account. So I can then go and I can invoke this function here in the cloud. I click on the little handy play button, and this function invokes in the cloud. And scrolling down over here, I can see the response, which has the uh, my variable the uh, as the environment variable, which I have read in my code. So closing this, let's have a look at Amazon Q. So what I can do for Amazon Q right here in the console is I can just type a, um, a comment and uh, invoke Amazon Q, and this is going to suggest code to be able to read the query string parameters. And I can carry on. I want to also put it in the response. So I'm going to get that query string parameters as part of the response and add that from Amazon Q. Really easy. I didn't have to set anything else up. Save and then deploy the new version of the function. So what I can do now is I can then test that uh, function again, and we have the same response, but this time it now handily has my query string parameters with my name included within the uh, response. So looking at some other kind of things that we can do, you can see in the settings I have the keyboard bindings, and also why not let's change the color theme to dark, because that's what I use in my local IDE, and it's just going to make it look the same. So I have my local IDE over here, uh, cloud IDE over here, now looking all the dark mode. And what I can also do is under the run and debug is I can actually look at the open CloudWatch lives tail. Now this is actually a really cool feature where even if I'm uh, invoking it by myself or even if I'm invoking it from a, some, an external person hitting my API, I'm able to live tail the logs in the console. And there's another whole video which we can go, which uh, can explain how this all works. 
But the next part I want to do is I actually want to download the function code. I may have started in the console, but really serverless best practices is about working in your IDE to be able to deploy uh, your software as part of CloudFormation or as part of a software delivery lifecycle. So downloading the code in the SAM template, and the SAM template represents those CloudFormation resources. So click on the button, I'm going to be able to download a zip file, which is going to include that code and the SAM template. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to then switch over to my lo local IDE. And I can see here immediately, first of all, it looks the same. So I was developing the cloud. Now I'm developing locally. Same dark mode. It all looks very kind of similar. And then once I'm in over here, um, I can also look at the application builder view. And I can show a visual template. I can build my application. I can deploy my application and do the whole kind of things locally, which allows me to, build my, uh, to work on my application. I also click on the play icon which opens up my local invoke and debug configuration. And what I can do here, similar to in the cloud, is I can select a sample event, API gateway in this stage. You know, I could edit the same as well. Also, I could pick up a local event from an event file. So this is a way that I could, uh, you know, test my function locally, and then I can go through the whole process of deploying it with a proper CloudFormation stack and having full infrastructure as code. And that's a quick look at the Lambda console with its new VS Code interface. This is one of many developer experience improvements we're rolling out to make developing with Lambda easier. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to AWS Developers for more hands-on technical content. See you next time.